we're at a brand new club and for a brand new club we have a brand new screen and this one feels rather nice we're taking over Fulham to see how we get on roll intro <laughs> Hello and welcome to Non-League to Glory. This is Club 3 Episode 1 as we start our journey with Fulham. And I promise to be here a lot longer than we were at MK Dons. Since you were last with me, form hasn't been fantastic. Although considering we have moved to a club that are basically shipped out good players and not really replaced them... It's not too bad. We've only lost the one game. So you see the first game we played against Blackpool. Uh, on the very day we took over, where we lost 2-1, uh, Marlon Romeo with the goal. We then drew 0-0 with Charlton, which was disappointing, before a 1-1 draw with playoff hopefuls West Bromwich Albion, thanks to Lubomir Tukta. Then we played Blackburn, where we won 2-0, thanks to Curtis Jones and John Michel Seri. And we looked a lot, lot better there. We've changed the tactic a little bit, which we'll bring you on to in a second, but that's what we're using. Let's get into the game. Obviously, we've not made many transfers, but we are going to have a look at the players as we get to them, because obviously, you'll understand that when I go through this team, we're going to make some changes next season. So let's get in and have a look. So this is the team that we're going to send out, and I'll introduce you to them now. So we've got Bettinelli, who will be in goals. Three and a half star current ability, three and a half star potential ability. He is as good as it gets. Rodak left the club. Bettinelli is now the club captain. He's been with Fulham for a long time. Last season, played 43, conceded 49. Better season, last sorry, season before last season, played 40, conceded 30. This season, his worst season to date, he's conceded 49 in just 39 games. On the right, Romeo, just back from injury, 3.5 star current ability, 3.5 star potential. This is as good as he gets. This guy was signed from Millwall this season, five and a half million pound transfer, regular at Millwall for the last four to five, six years. Um, definitely a regular for the last four years. And this is his best season to eight, four goals and four assists. Michael Hector, who I thought would be better than this. And we tried to renew his contract um, because at 17 grand in the championship, it's not too bad. He wanted more. Uh, and I think he wanted a longer contract, and he's 29, and I'm not convinced. So we've yet to sign the contract. He's a three-star current ability, three-star potential ability. He's not getting any better. He was an £8 million signing from Chelsea. He's played only a handful of games, 29 games in total, 16 of those this season. We then have Taylor Moore, who is a... Three and a half star current ability, four star potential ability, 24 year old ball playing central defender. He was signed for 2.3 million from Bristol City this season. He wasn't exactly a regular for Bristol City. 19 games in his first season, 12 games then, and then one game before going to us. So that makes 30 this season. Then we have Lamarchard. Lamarchard is homesick, wants to move back. We've told him at the end of the season he can go. I'm not convinced by him, although he has got a couple of assists since we took over. He's 32. Um, reasonable offer, and we will let him go. Three-star current ability, three-star potential ability. And the problem is, we don't have another left-back that is capable of playing there. The nearest we have is Tim Ream and Jack Burns. Now, Jack Burns is 18 years old and could potentially, depending on where we get to, come in this season. Um, we'll have a look at the table in a second, actually. Um, but I don't want to bring Jack Burns in when there's still the faintest of hope of promotion, which I don't think we're going to get. In the centre, we've got Sambo Anguissa, contracted till 2024. He's on 64 grand a week, four star current ability, four star potential ability, comfortable as a Scundo Volante and a ball winning midfielder. He can also play in plenty of other positions in there. He was at Villarreal on loan in the first season of the save. 
Um, he was then played 16 games last year, he's played 33 this year, scored five, one assist, hasn't been pulling up trees, is getting, no he's not, he's 26, so actually might be worth keeping hold of Anguissa. Seri, on the other hand, has been poor up until the last game when he scored. A three and a half star current ability, three and a half star potential ability. He's 30 years old. He's a decent player, but he's on 62 grand a week. He isn't getting any younger. He is wanted by Sampdoria. If an offer comes in from Sampdoria, I'm inclined to accept and put that money elsewhere. Played last season 41 games, 5 goals, 15 assists. Fulham finished 4th last year. 7 goals and 7 assists this year. He is, average rating-wise, playing better, but he's got 6 games to go. And he needs to be on fire for the remaining 6 games. Alan Halilovic is a right midfielder, also a right winger, and a cent attacking central midfielder. 3.5 star current ability, 4 star potential ability. He has yet to play a game for us because he's been out injured. 25-year-old Croatian, signed from Milan. Uh, cost 2.3 million, 34 games last season, 30 this season. Hasn't pulled up any trees, but is having a better season assist-wise. If we can get him ticking straight away after the injury, we could have a decent player on our hands. Tom Kearney, attacking midfielder, 31-year-old, Scottish international, 3.5 star current ability, 3.5 star potential ability. Surprised he is not club captain still. That falls to Bettinelli. He's not even vice-captain. He is wanted and he is 31. Norwich want him. A decent offer and I would be inclined to let him go. He's played 37 games this season. 10 goals, 8 assists. Better season last year. Although his contribution, goals and assists was um, a little better. With 9 goals and 11 assists. Involved in 20 uh, goals and a 7.19 rating. Jones is on the left. He's a three and a half star current ability, five star potential ability. This lad looks like, and we know in real life, could go far. He hasn't shown it up until the last game. Um, he can play as that attacking midfielder, can also play up top, but he's more comfortable on the left as either an inverted winger or an inside forward. Was a bargain 1.6 million sign in last season. He's in his second season now. Ratings-wise, not that great. He's chipped in with eight goals this season. Only played 30 last season. And then we have Carlin Grant. Out injured twice. Hasn't played that much for me. Three-star current ability. Four-star potential ability. 24-year-old. Um, advanced forward. He's at eight goals this season in 37 games. He hasn't been prolific at all at this level. And I'm inclined to think that he may be moved on. Um, because I like a good striker and Carl and Grant has had chances he has had a couple of injuries though so we forgive him that bench buys we have Luca Ashby Hammond not good enough to take over as the number one um, in fact he's a little way off he is wanted and they're loan moves and so if we can get a good understudy or somebody better than Bettinelli Hammond may be allowed to leave on loan next year Marius Nicolau would be in for Hector today. Looks a real prospect. 18 year old central defender. He's part of the under 19 England setup. Three star current ability, five star potential. We've got him uh, contracted down till 2026 with an option for a further three years. Um, valued at only 165k. He is already, I think, better than Hector or as good as Hector and Lamarchard. Um, he's almost as good as Taylor Moore. And I think he will be in the next couple of years taking over there and probably on to bigger, better things. Um, unless we can take him there. Um, interest has been shown him before we renewed that contract, so could be a useful uh, uh, si uh, signing, a useful player for us. He's, uh, he's not fit today, which is why Hector starts. Lubomir Tupta is a Slovak striker, he's a poacher. He signed on a free transfer, having been with Hellas Verona in Serie B last season. Hasn't really done much of note. Um, this season has played 12 games, most of those from the bench. He scored for us recently, playing on that right-hand side. He hasn't really featured up top. 
this is about as good as he gets and he will probably be moved on next season. Aliou Treo is a 21-year-old French central midfielder. Two and a half star current ability, four star potential ability. We're only paying him £3,000 a week. He's contracted till the end of next season. He was signed from Manchester United for £425,000 and he's featured in five games since. And I think all of those have been from the sub bench. We then have Cyrus Christie, who is now 29 years old. We're paying him 20 grand a week. He isn't staying past the end of the season. He isn't that great. He is already not as good as Romeo. Taylor Moore's almost as good as him, who was a central defender. And we have this guy coming through, 18-year-old right back, uh, Mick Ungar, who is looking like he will come through, if not this season, the following season. We also had Edward Bolanus, a 23-year-old Colombian striker. This is probably about as good as he is. He's wanted on loan. I think we're going to end up selling him. I don't know why we've signed him. Um, he was a free transfer from Aguas Pereira after, what, five loan deals in the past four seasons. Um, never really pulled up roots. He has scored five in 16, but when we give him a chance, he hasn't taken it for us. And then finally, Josh Anoma, a left winger. Can play on the right as well. Can play through the centre. Two and a half star current ability. Four star potential ability. I'm not sure whether he'll fulfil his potential. Um, if we look, he has played a lot of games for Fulham, 24, 31 and 26. He's never pulled up roots. Filed at 5.75 million and paid 28k. Depending on what we do, this may be another player that goes. What we have found is much like MK Dons when we were there, there's not much strength in depth to this squad, although there's a lot of youngsters coming through. The squad's been allowed to age and they have moved on players. What they haven't done is sign adequate replacements, so they are below par. With the exception of a couple, i.e. Taylor Moore, Marlon Romeo and then the wingers Halilovic and Curtis Jones. So that's the side that we put out today. The table looks a little bit like this. We're still 12th. I was quite optimistic that when we took over, where we were, and six points adrift off promotion, of playoffs, we could get into that and start mixing it up. Now, if that had gone to plan, that would have been four straight wins, and that would have put us, I believe, on 65 points here. It just so happens we threw away a game against West Brom. It was a decent result. We ended up drawing one all, but we could have won that. Um, we were awful against Blackpool. No team looked great when we played Charlton who were down in relegation, but then we looked awesome against Blackburn. So I think this is more about consolidating our position in the championship to finishes as high as possible. It's about then rebuilding Fulham for next season, and it's about trying to challenge for the top. So the most important thing will be the transfer special. Um, the season end review and the transfer special that we'll do. Um, so I think that we're probably going to finish round about where we are now. And then it's getting this squad sorted. So let's get on with today's game. We are playing Leeds. And this should be a tough game for us. I do want to tell them to pick up from where they left off last time. Where are we? Carry straight on from your last match. We are playing Leeds. Leeds who we've already had our scouts come back with a couple of their players. They they should be uh, promoted. Um, there's no two ways about it. Their squad is good enough. Um, and they look like they're going to get it this season. And it's Kenny. And let me change this. There we go. So we've got Diallo, who plays it into the centre to the Moose. Got Diallo again. Oh, and they're 1-0 up. Jason Malumbe and Habib Diallo with the assists. And we're down already, eight minutes gone. And look at Leeds, they are flying. Um, I think victory today is almost a certainty to get them promotion. 
it's an easy ball as well. I think that's Hector who just lets his man run. And, and you can see where we've come up now against better opposition and we look out. Um, attacking wise we're really good but that defence, you've got Lamarchard who wants to go home, you've got Hector who doesn't look great, you've got um, the young lad there, Nicolau who is looking like he could be something but needs a little bit of time and there's Grant losing the ball again um, Anguisa now Kearney tackled, Kearney gets it back, Halilovic, and that could have been in then, but it remains 1-0. Um, and then we have um, Christie, and that's about it. Taylor Moore's there, we've now got an injury at the left, and we don't have a left back. We have equalised, Tom Kearney with his 12th goal of the season, assist by Taylor Moore, but we've got to make a change. What injury is it? Potential foot injury. I hate leaving players on. Christie's going to have to come on and play on that side. And he wants to be, he preferred to be a wing back. Yeah, I don't think he preferred to be on there at all. But let's see this goal again. And it's Seri's free kick. Moore with the header. Kearney picks up the loose ball and puts it in. Um, but Moore there. Could have scored. Halilovic now gets it away, punts it upfield to Grant, and Grant needs to run with the ball. He's got players running in. Can he release? He doesn't. He takes on one, and that's a weak shot on Grant. Um, he's got a bit of the um, Whitakers about him uh, from Alfreton Town, who uh, continually did things that looked impressive till the final bit because he wouldn't pass the ball. But it's one all against Leeds. We can't complain. We are pleased and to keep it up. Hector. Back to Bettinelli. Bettinelli plays it out to Moore. Moore to Christie. Christie to Jones. Jones into Anguissa. Now Kearney, Kearney picks up the ball, plays it in, but it's just not, it's too tight to get through. Diallo and Temenuskov, and Temenuskov, keeper saves, and heck to make sure it's a throw in and not a corner. Uh, we remain at one all. Halilovic is probably going to come off pretty soon because this is his first game back after injury. He's not doing spectacularly let's have a look at this let's get Elilovic off and we are going to bring Tupter on because he has had a decent game when we've played him there um, and Balanus is going to come off for Colin Grant I'm not impressed with Colin Grant at all I think he could be out of the door um, you know it's pretty disappointing Grant, Balanus um, I mean we have got Tupter to try there and that might be a thing in the next game but it's Kearney now, Romeo Romeo, Romeo goes forward alone and he's tackled. And you're hanging on to it for far too long. Temenuskov now plays it in and Diallo with the header. So we look that like we're going to be rebuilding for next season. This is going to be another draw. And so once we have it confirmed that that's with no promotion, it's then about getting rid of those players. I want them out the door as soon as we can, um, which will probably be towards the next game. And it's to Monuskov, and that's a goal. And I wouldn't say Leeds have been great. We've just been poor. We are going to go attacking and tell them to show some passion for the last five minutes. It's just... Pornous. It's it's an aging team that hasn't been improved and just left. Um, awful. Um, awful. Who's ever let this? Well, it's Arsenal who's who's done this, and Parker who was here before. Um, 
Mm, let's try and keep their confidence high. I think that's basically confirmed that we will not get the promotion. Let's go and have a look at the big table. Um, there we go, 12, 58 points. We are 9 points adrift with 5 games left. That means there's 15 points. That means we'd need to win 5 games and hope everybody from here upwards doesn't win more than 2. So it's not going to happen. Um, we've got, we're going to play, go into this Wigan game next. And I think we're going to make some changes. So I'll see you for the Wigan game. Now, on to the Wigan game. And you may think I've gone insane. But we can't get promotion. Some of those players are approaching the ends of their careers. I want the money in. And so we're at the moment trying to put those players out. As such, we will be playing some new players today. And so I'd like to introduce you, firstly, to Mr Burns. Let's first of all change that. Jack Burns is an 18 year old left back, 2 star current ability, 3.5 star potential ability. Um, he's probably not going to be good enough to play again, but isn't that far off what we already have? And I want Marshard gone. He wants to go at the end of the season. He hasn't been playing fantastic. It's time for some younger legs, and he will make his debut today. Also, welcome Mr. John O'Brien. 18-year-old central midfielder, two-star current ability, four-star potential ability, is about to get his second appearance and full debut. We bring in Aliou Traor. We introduced you to him last time. Two-and-a-half-star current ability, four-star potential ability, and is about to get his first full start. Jones and Halilovic we've already introduced you to, and Tupta also, but he's going to start up front where he's not had a chance as yet. We've also brought onto the bench Chung Ka Chun, who is a 18-year-old Hong Kong um, international, nine caps already, 18, two-star current ability, five-star potential ability. He's on the bench, and if he comes on, we'll make his debut. Chris Manning, a 16-year-old striker, two-star current ability, five-star potential ability. Matteo Tomic, two-star current ability, five-star potential ability, Croatian central midfielder. Mick Ungar, an 18-year-old right-back, one-and-a-half-star current ability, four-star potential ability. And then we've got Williams and Fitzpatrick. So what we've done is tried to get rid of the deadwood. Um, and when I say deadwood, I mean Kearney's a fantastic player, but he's 31. He'll be 32 next season. He's valued at 10 million. I'd rather have that 10 million to find somebody who's going to go and keep us going. It's, not, it's obviously not worked this season for him. Um, there's other players like Seri, Seri's 31. All these players are approaching the end of the contract and have some resale value. And I would rather resell them now and give me the money to improve the squad in the summer than to keep them around for the sake of winning a couple of games towards the end of the season. This will also give some of our youth prospects a chance and actually see them. This will help them improve and I'd rather do that than what we have been doing which hasn't worked because the squad's just not good enough and it's aging so let's get into this game and as you can see we've got four players there who are being given a shirt number for the first time so this is an experimental Fulham side today and I don't want to I want to say good luck good luck although it's very strange that they are we're considered to be the underdogs and to pull off an upset but while it's there, I'm going to take it. I mean, if that's the case, Fulham's fall in the championship has come pretty quick as well. Um, as you can see, we're still keeping Anguissa. We've still got Halilovic, Jones, Tupta's knocking around there. Moore, Romeo, Bettinelli. So I haven't emptied the entire squad out. We've just emptied players that are unlikely to be there next season. So we can have some Johansson's, another one, approaching that end. Um, four shots, one on target, 42%. We've, we've weakened the team this is going to happen but there's nobody who can sit there um, and say that this isn't something to do because we ain't getting promotion um, we're not doing badly at all and we're not because we have changed this squad up um, I mean John O'Brien Burns uh, probably Nicolau wouldn't have got nowhere near this side at the start of the season 
Um, but it, it is disappointing. Um, you know, instantly I took I took the job at Fulham and thought, mm, we can get these victories. It, it's going to be a piece of cake. But I quickly found out that those problems, probably on another level, but run deeper than MK Dons, which is why it's fell off this season. Treyor now, Romeo. Romeo in, and that looked like a penalty. It is a penalty. So this experimental side could be 1-0 up away from home, which would be good. It's Jones who's going to take. And Jones... Oh, it's saved. Oh... And that, if that's, is, what's happening here? Have I just gone insane? I think we've had a glitch. Jones has missed the penalty. We are going to make some changes. Tupta is not the man I thought he was. Um, Chris Manning's going to come on. We have a 16-year-old who is playing up front. Chung Ka Chun is going to come on. And he's going to replace Nicolau who's going to play as a central defender. And we are also going to bring on Josh Anoma, who hasn't had a chance on that left. And uh, Curtis Jones, I know his rating's that low because he missed the penalty, but he hasn't been fantastic for us. Um, one game, and again he hasn't turned it on today. Um, but it's Wigan now who are through with Ward, and that's 1-0. Oh, I think we're going to finish 12th. Um, Derby are on 53 points. We'd be on 59. I don't think we're going to climb above anymore. Um, especially with the side that they've got. Jones blew his penalty. Ward scores. With all the players we had at our disposal this season at the beginning... Um, Fulham should have been doing better. That's probably why I got the job. Um, it is what it is. We we have got a summer to rebuild the team, but I don't think we've got much longer after that um, because I think they'll want promotion next season. That's a great ball through to Manning. And the 16-year-old has scored to level this up. Halilovic and welcome... Mr. Manning, 60-year-old Fulham superstar, Halilovic, is plays him in one-on-one -on -one and puts it in the bottom right-hand corner. Composure for a 16-year-old and Manning scores. And we may have found our new striker for the remaining games. It's Romeo now. Halilovic crosses it. Nobody there, but O'Brien's going to pick up this ball. Burns is in. And Manning scored again. And Burns has assisted. We are 2-1 up. And take a bow. Chris Manning. 16-year-old superstar gets two on his debut. Halilovic involved again. It comes out. Another youngster, O'Brien, to another youngster, Burns. And then Manning sticking it in the bottom corner. Who says you can't win anything with kids? We have... We don't need to see this for a third time, for a third time even. <clears throat> but we have uh, rescued that game, and it's all thanks to Halilovic and the kids. Very nice. They did write us off. Well done. An unexpected victory. Um, and Manning, this young guy, who. We have signed, he provisionally agreed to sign a contract already, so I was unable to offer him that deal. I don't think we can find out what his contract actually is going to be. Um, but this guy looks amazing. Um, he's got the five star. We already knew he's going to be good in the future. He's been with us two years, but look at that. Two goals on his full debut. Anyway... Let's have a look at the table and let's go to the big table. So we've actually moved up into 11th position. 17 victories, 10 draws, 15 defeats. Uh, goals for and against remains level. Not scoring enough and conceding too many. 
61 points, which puts us eight points behind Swansea, but there's only four games left. We ain't getting promoted. Um, we may be able to push for a couple more positions, but what we're going to do is we are going to get through, literally just going to get rid of Swansea and Cardiff before we come back for those last two games of the season and a quick review. Um, the review won't be long, we've only been here, we'll have been here for 10 games I think. Um, it will just be probably having a quick look round um, and seeing what we're going to do for next season. Um, and probably have a look at some future superstars. Um, I am going to have a quick look at um, some of the youth teams such as Manchester City. Um, see if they are getting rid of any youngsters uh, Manchester United, Liverpool and things and see who we come across um, but that is part of the club vision um, as we go to club vision they are pleased we're playing possession football and are satisfied that we're playing attacking football um, everything else is reserved judgement finances we have 12.5 million 717,000 we've got a couple hundred thousand to play for there's plenty to play with projection we'll make a profit this season but we're predicted to lose money we need premiership football um so that's the end of this episode that's your first taste of fulham and that's us introducing you to the 16 year old chris manning I wouldn't be surprised gets an England call up very soon uh, to the England under 19s, 17s. Um, you know, his potential looks great and he's coming along nicely. But welcome to the new superstar. Uh, he will be playing the last four games if he stays injury free. Um, I'm Adam, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next episode. We are heroes tonight We will fly above the sky We are heroes tonight